Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. We just had a great conversation with Corey List from Cree Lighting. Man, that was a good one, eh, Greg? That was, yeah. They like what they're doing and see where it heads or where it goes to from here, but it was a good talk for sure. Yeah, man. Check it out. But for right now, we got to tell you not so quickly about Kurtz on Lighting. Go to K-U-R-T-Z-O-N.com, baby. That's specification grade. Kurtz on, Greg. That's right. And now they're partnering with BIOS. And we met, was it Robert Solar at Robert Solar. Uh, at the Strategies in Light? He's a uh, founder or co-founder of BIOS. Actually worked for NASA. I think he's about our age or a little younger. So impressive guy. Uh, but the, the technology they have is very interesting. It was developed for NASA for the International Space Station. And Kurtzon is partnering with them. And they're putting it in all of their spec grade unique fixtures that we know about their clean room and containment, their medical fixtures, uh, their behavioral health, uh, everything, wet location, all the goods that Kurtzon does. Now they have circadian friendly lighting in BIOS. So, you know what? It sounds like a good marriage. You know, the specification oh, sure. grade king with BIOS. Come on, man. That's how you yeah. do it right. Go to K-U-R-T-Z-O-N.com, baby. That's Kurtzon.com for specification grade. And, of course, the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, where it all started, folks. Get a grip on lighting. That's where we started getting a grip on things. And now we're full-blown on live at shows and everything else. And we thank you, the listener. But what you should really do, listener, really, if you're a lighting distributor, you should join Nailed. That's right. Come on down. 695 bucks. Check us out. Biloxi, Mississippi, 19th to 23rd. But for right now, got Cree Lighting, Corey Litzt on Get a Grip on Lighting Podcast. Welcome to the Get a Grip on Lighting Podcast, Corey. Hey, thanks for having me. Say hi to Greg Eric. Hey, Greg, what's going on? Hey, Corey, thanks for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate it. So here's, here's my question. Um, is what you've created a form of augmented reality? <laughs> um, I get it could it could be. Um, I wouldn't go with maybe as far to say it's augmented reality. Um, really, what we're trying to do is to go provide something that's more value beyond just a light. How do we do something that's better? Something that changes how people feel, changes just how they respond to their environment. And that's really what's exciting about the Cadian. So I'm the principal systems engineer on the project, so I got to be part of all the nuts and bolts and trying to make this thing work from end to end. And, uh, you know, the exciting part about it is we're having an impact on people's lives. And that's what really makes me excited about the project. Ah, okay. So why should I believe that you're having an impact on people's lives, though, Corey? How do you know that statement's true? Well, we know, and, you know, I think you're going to talk about this later with Shirley, but we know that circadian rhythm is a scientifically proven thing, right? We know how, how you know, you go out in the sun and how it makes you feel, you know, how, you know, the warm of the day makes you sleep. It starts to make you a little sleepy at night when it starts to dim down at night. And you, so, you know, all these things and your body is naturally trying to do these things. And where the cadian really comes in is it's really trying to bring the outdoors in, right? You're inside an office all day in 4,000, 5,000 K lights, just sitting there working at your desk. Imagine for a second, if now I can provide a different environment that lets you feel like you're outside. And that's really what the Cadian's about. So, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I, I, I'm excited by it, but I'm also a skeptic in this space. Okay. Okay. Right. So, um, right. like I, when I when I first saw it, and the, and the thing came across my desk, and they said I was going to interview Shirley, and then I'm like, well, who made this thing? I want that guy who came up with this idea. All right. That's the guy I really want to interview. And Greg and I felt the same way. See, see what 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 you're talking about. You're not talking about light when you're talking about this. What you're talking about is mm -hmm. almost an interior design play. It's like a, you know how you can grow coral with those 10,000 K HID lamps or those um, sure. things, right? It's almost yep. like that for humans in a way. It's like mm -hmm. put the naked apes under these cadian light <laughs> fixtures and they will think they're outside or they'll think it's a thing and they'll, they'll, be, they'll be happier. The coral will grow. Um, like, do you feel a little bit weird about doing that? I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't, um, cause really what we're trying to do is create an experience, right? How do we get, how do we do something that's beyond just providing light? And I know I'm, I'm saying this again, but I want to create an experience. I want, I want something, somebody to be excited to be in a space. 
And you know that's why we have lighting designers, right? They design a space to try to make it as comfortable as possible. We're trying to augment that. We're trying to provide another another avenue for the, our lighting designers to be able to provide an environment that's you know exciting for people. Is it for sure a lighting fit? Like, why not put it in a light fixture? Why is it separate? What do you mean? Why not put it in a light fixture? Why is uh, it separate? Because when well, we talked to Shirley before, and, and mm -hmm. to me, it sounds like it's more of a it's a standalone fixture or part that is not meant for everyday lighting purposes. This is meant to have an addition to whatever you use to light your space. Is that correct still, or are you guys putting it in light fixtures? Well, so yeah, it's in Arcadian fixture, which is the light fixture. And it actually, this whole concept of what we're calling dynamic lighting, it's basically being able to change this CCT and the dim levels throughout the day um, and create your own custom profiles. That's actually expands across all of our intelligent platforms. So our other fixtures are adopting the same methodology of being able to basically change the CCT and dim levels throughout the day automatically. Um, and where this really comes into place, another uh, application that you know gets me excited is you know you think about people that are you know working late at night or nurses stations is a good example right mm, typically they're yeah, central sure. inside of a hospital sure. um, they don't get to see a lot of windows and i'll i'll share a little personal experience we were just uh my daughter was born a couple months ago and we were in the NICU for 15 days and then i'll tell you what being in that type of environment anything you could you could use anything at that point and you could you know, an uplift, something to help provide a little bit of that outside because you're in a hospital all day long. Nurses are there every day, all day, just busting it. And anything I could do to help them would be just, you know, icing on the cake. So lighting, so, lighting effects. So you go ahead, Greg. You keep going. I'm yeah, going, I just, I'm I, super I interested in, in this for interrupting each other here. You go, Greg. <laughs> That's yeah. fine. Go ahead. Um, so this fixture is, or this Canadian unit or whatever we're calling it, is a light fixture meant to light your space in addition to everything else it does is that is that right absolutely hmm. oh see i had that wrong it is, on it, our is last call. Yeah, it, it is it is a light fixture you can use it as your single source of lighting if you want to um oh. or you can use it in concert with some of our other fixtures um our typical use case application is probably going to be in concert you think of a conference room you may have two cadence above your conference room table and maybe some down lights around to accent the walls right that's kind of a typical use case but there's no reason it couldn't be your primary lighting and actually several of our offices around the space you know have this cadence one or two cadence in their space as their primary lighting source. so your your lighting has been going up and down while i've been watching you on the camera and i've seen the light fixtures in the whiteboard behind you do you have cadence above you doing that right now i don't have cadence i think that's the uh, my camera of reacting ah, to me moving okay. back and forth okay. so and now right. i can move it uh causing problems so so let me ask you this so humans have always used um light to make effect in spaces so for example you know think of chartres in france Okay, the, the, the cathedral with the, the enormous stained glass and there's no electric light, right? So it's all the effects of light to create a, uh, a sense of holiness or a sanct sanctified, a sanctified space using light. And now, you know, so back then that, you know, you had to go outside if you wanted to go outside. Is it possible with electricity to really create a space like that inside where someone can go into and feel that so i don't know if you've ever been into a bathroom that has an enormous skylight above the tub or mm -hmm. an enormous skylight mm -hmm. above the shower and you get in it in the morning and you're showering you look up you see the sunlight or maybe the sun is rising it's absolutely a glorious way to design a bathroom with a skylight above the shower or in that area in the mm -hmm. morning is it possible like are you are we suggesting that in 10 15 years that on a regular basis, people will design offices with the ability to mimic that effect. Man, I sure hope so. And that I think the Canadian is the, the step in that direction. That's that's what we're on the cusp of. That's what we're trying to do. That um that you know sense of awe when you're standing in the shower with this giant skylight is basically you know that's your source of comfort, right? You're you're in you know your element, um, and that's basically what the Canadian's trying to do is provide additional comfort to people that are indoors all day long um, one of the really nice things about the cadian is it's fully customizable so and what i mean by that is you know you don't have to necessarily follow the sun and have it do the 3000 to 5000 k shift east to west you could have it on if you're a person that man i'm most comfortable i want that bright white you know 5000 k light all day long you can do that you can have it switch to 3000 k and have it do that all day long it's really the whole purpose is to provide additional comfort and make being indoors all day a little more enjoyable. 
Are do you, you guys? A, sorry, Greg. I'm, I just love yeah, this yeah. Topic. You go. You go. You go. I gotta get. <laughs> I gotta let you talk a little bit here. Go. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. trying to get the lighting, the practicality of it. You know, back to the field, like okay. how we're gonna install it and sell it. So you're saying in like yeah. a, a cube, a cube area where you have maybe 20 fixtures over however many people, eight people, whatever. Should every fixture be Kadiot, or should you do pick and choose some that? Because I think when we were talking before, it sounded like as long as it's kind of in your sight line of sight. It's okay, but you're, mm-hmm. are you talking directly over you and all of them, or I'm just trying to I think it's, figure out how to install? So totally up to the, to the lighting designer, right? Um, okay. Obviously, you know, you, you could have it as an accent light kind of right in the center, showcasing how a typical skylight would be. It would You know, typically you don't have sky, like a skylight over every cube, right? So right. if you wanted to really mimic what a skylight would be, you put it in the center of the cubes, put four of them together to get that kind of window effect, and then have your typical accent troffers, downlights, whatever me around that. That would be like a typical install, but there's nothing to limit you from saying, I couldn't put one over every cube because I want every person to have their own customized control for their own, you know, cube. Absolutely. You could do that. Um, now, who it's pretty flexible it? in that regard. Yeah. Who recommends so it's, it? Like if, if we just want to mimic the daylight, we say we're trusting you guys yeah. to tell us what to do. You have a system that does it. We do. So we have, it, we've got a tablet interface with an application that basically goes and knows what time it is based off the time of day and that's where you're at so time zone right we're in new york time zone here so we're going to be east coast and so it actually goes and follows basically the time zone of the day um and we'll track the sun that way that's listen 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 so here here, here's what here's what's interesting to me okay so okay now now I'm going back away from the practical where I belong, which is in the crazy <laughs> stuff. So I have a little bit of a meme. I was talking to a, a philosopher, um, Chris Preston, who's mm-hmm. uh, an evolutionarily a Darwinistic philosopher. I can't remember how you what the actual term is, but he's a philosopher. And I talked about this Eve's apple stuff, you know, kind of like rising above, you know, human consciousness expanding and knowledge expanding mm-hmm. to the point of almost where we're like unto God, like we're creators, right? And, mm-hmm. and in a sense, we're creatures of light. You know, uh, all of our energy comes from the sun. We're, you know, we're, we're whipping around the sun at 14,000 kilometers an hour or whatever it is. And we're pulled in, we're held there. It's all done by light. And it's interesting to think that, um, you know, you say choice. I think what, what the real secret here, Corey, is not to offer people choice. I think the real secret is you don't get any choice, you naked ape. This is what you need. Yeah. Because if you start offering people choice, then you're going to have skylights doing all sorts of wonky shit. How come his son is a different color than my son? Mm-hmm. Right? My, the sun is sure. the same for everybody. And we got to take away the choice. And if the industry can come forward and say, sorry, um, software engineer, the reason why you're depressed and taking um, you know, antidepressant medication is because you're sleeping all day, you show up to your office at night, you turn off, you rip all the fluorescent tubes out of your light and you stare at a bright screen. You know, you might mm-hmm. if, if you know, if you if you were in a casino, you'd probably lose your whole paycheck. That's how it, you know, how weird it's what the cause is. I think when we get to the point as an industry and with the research, like there, there's almost like this collision between the researching of lighting and the mm-hmm. and the manufacturing and technology that's going to smash together and then we're just going to say to all the naked apes out there this is what you need sure yeah if the research points that direction i think they i think you're absolutely right one thing that's interesting is you know the speed of light is considered the fundamental constant of the universe and i personally don't believe we fully grasp the impact of what light has on us um, we know light is a particle and a ray at the same time it's a force and you know um yet an electromagnetic wave it, it's it's so many complexities that we don't understand and so to your point you know at some point when we get further down in our research and we can understand the true impact of light you're right it probably will be a prescribed thing that we need to start pushing as opposed to a choice but early on in this stage we got to just figure it out and so that's part of what the cadian provides is an opportunity to try things out see what works for your your group see what works for you as an individual in your office um and you can feel that out and see how it impacts your day you see that that position comes from uncertainty because as an industry we're uncertain sure. we want to leave mm-hmm. the choice to the people that know the least you don't know how you feel no, no, I don't. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Be- who knows better how you feel? That's you such do. a load of crap, Corey. 
What are you talking about? No, 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 no. I, listen, if you go, listen, you've obviously never sold lights to the end user in your life. Because if you go ask people what kind of light mm -hmm. they want, yeah. I, mean, I want the white lights, I want this light, I want that, where's sure. the this, that? They don't know what the hell they want. Right, which Take is why we have recommended out. profiles. Exactly. The industry need. needs to come forward. If you want to come in hot with a payback, yeah. so if a commercial property mm -hmm. manager comes to me and says, you know, I want to cut my hydro bill in half, how do you want to do it? I want to cut it in half. Well, how do you want to do it? Well, I'm asking you. Well, I, hey, buddy, it's all up to you. How do you feel about your energy savings? No, I come out and I say, look, you do this and you're going to have this, mm -hmm. right? We got to be yeah. able, if you want to really blast off with this circadian shit we gotta go be able greg and i guys like badasses like greg and i who are slinging light bulbs mm -hmm. all day long to the end users need to be able to walk in and say oh yeah buddy you want to improve the human health outcomes for your peeps you got to yeah. do this you got to come in hot with some canadians and we're in, nobody's allowed to choose everybody gets this setting because you know where you are son where are you you're in Minneapolis, and this is the time of day in Minneapolis, and this light is going to make him feel like he's outside all day, and then when he goes home, he's going to sleep better, 5% better, 10% right. better. And you know what that, that is actually worth? If you could actually do that. Yeah. Forget about energy oh, savings. Forget about everything yeah. else, man. Yeah. You're, you're, no, I, I totally hear you. We're not there yet, but we're, that's what we're trying to do. That's where we're headed. Right. So that's why we have these recommended profiles that we provide as part of the application that we've done quite a bit of internal research on. And then we're working with some external partners as well to try to develop these profiles. But we're not at a point today where I could say 100 percent. Hey, here's exactly how you're going to feel if I put this light on you. Right. We have a lot of research going on in that place. So how many profiles do you have? And can you define a little Correct. bit about what the profile looks like? Sure. So we have uh, really three three main profiles that come up with the fall, the fall of the sun. That one's pretty straightforward, right? We know the CCT of the sun relatively at certain times of the day and its intensity and what angle it's typically going to hit you at if you had a skylight above your above your head. So we can mimic that one pretty well. Um, <laughs> oh, I love that, man. I, I love yeah, that. Awesome. Oh, good. All right, good. Yeah, yeah. You uh, know how yeah. easy then, that uh, is to sell? Yeah. Follow the sun. That, <laughs> right. follow the, that's what it's called. That is what the profile I, I is called. It. Follow the sun. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, okay. I mean, like, dude, like all the other, all the other choice shit, you don't get to choose, boy. You get this. You get the sun. <laughs> right. You follow the sun. That, that, I, I'm going to interrupt. That is the default profile. This out of the box. What's that, Scotty? This one's been driving me a little nuts. This one's been driving me a little All nuts. Right. I got my producer coming in here. He's, he reads every article that comes out on this. Because I'm like, I've been, th this has been stuck in my brain for uh, weeks. If I install this on where it's on a north, like northeast to southwest axis. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do I set that? <laughs> How do I set it to follow the sun? Like, right. do I have to have so, it on a cardinal? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, there's a chance you could be off by 45 degrees. It's a square fixture. It's not a round fixture. So you, you, you could be off by 45 degrees. Yes. So this is no good for my house. My house is on an angle to the to north. So the 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 sun runs from corner to corner. So you will you could you it should work for your house if you're sitting on a true north north south east west axis you're gonna be off. No, I'm on degrees. like north by northwest. If you're on north by northwest, then you should you should be able to have Cadian work in your space. There you go, Scott. Yeah. All you right, follow the sun. What are the other two? All right, so the other the other two are um, we do it we have. Uh, have a recommended profile for hospital, which is basically a repeat of the fall of the sun twice a day, basically to line up with a seven to seven shift. So if you imagine somebody's coming in at night, you want it to feel like the day you have the sun rise. So you're basically repeat and follow the sun twice a day. The third profile um, that is still deep in research and it's probably, it's pretty preliminary at this point. Um, but we have a recommended profile for schools. Um, one thing that research is showing is that different color temperatures, different dim levels are better for certain scenarios. So for example, when somebody comes, all the kids come in back in from recess, right? You typically want to have lower light levels, lower CCT levels, try to bring everybody, calm everybody down before we start the next activity. But when you're in a test scenario or you're trying to do mathematics specifically, the brighter light, the 5,000 K is shown as research has shown that people perform better in those scenarios. So if you ever tried to take a test at 
dim levels and 3000 CCT, you're probably falling asleep while you're trying to take the test, which is not the best environment. So we actually created this profile that mimics um, one of the schools here, their schedule and basically shows, you know, when they come back in from recess, we're going to ramp it down, but then we're going to ramp it back up based off when they study certain th subjects. Um, and again, just a recommendation. It's not going to work for every school. We can't prescribe that because we don't know what their schedules are, but this is their, the idea. So going to the follow of the sun, if, if somebody doesn't have cadient, but they have Kelvin mm -hmm. temperature tuning or color tuning fixtures, can they follow a profile? Do you have it printed or written where somebody could say, go 3K, then go 35, then 5, then down? Or whatever it might be. Yes. So that so it's when when you buy the application, it's default in there. It works with all of our intelligent fixtures. So for example, our CR fixtures, which are CCT and DIM level, you can adjust those two, but you don't get the east-west effect. You can run that same profile on those fixtures without a cadian, and it'll run the CCT um, change and the DIM level change throughout the day. Where do you have it posted where anybody can go see it? Or do you have it posted on your website? We don't have it, we don't have it posted on our website today. Top secret. Would you? Is it top secret, or would you would you be willing to post it for people? Not in my authority to say, but I'm just the engineer, man. <laughs> okay, I think you should. I think you should grab the lawyer from the office next door and sit him down. With <laughs> <Hey. him. laughs> That's right. Okay, my turn now, Greggy, on this guy. Okay, go, so go, go. I don't even know where to start uh, with my questions here that I got. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Let's start with the schools. Okay, okay. so I don't know if you're familiar with Adam Lillian from the UL. Have you seen some of his work? I haven't. Okay, so he uh, he aggregated over two hundred studies of natural mm -hmm. light and students, um, and what they found was that you know cor a correlation between natural windows and skylights, real skylights and mm -hmm. windows, and student performance. I can't remember what the number was, but it was sig statistically significant. Okay, mm -hmm. but was what was what he told me, which really blew my mind away was that it also held true for sun tunnels, okay? Yeah. So you know the sun tunnels that are just like a pipe that goes up to the roof? Yep. So yep. you can't actually see outside, mm -hmm. okay? And I thought to myself, like, that's crazy. Why would the, um, like, they have these, he aggregated all these different studies over the last 50 years of natural light, but the sun, there was like 16 of them or 15 of them or something that were sun tunnels. And he's like, it held up. So there's something with natural light that is a, that affects, correlates to, the correlates, doesn't cause, correlates to the, the, the student performance. So that blew my mind away. And then when we were speaking with Dr. Veach, it kind of emerged that in a sense, we're kind of like fish figuring out that they're in water. Right? With light. Like right, we, yeah. You know you can see. Right? You know when a police officer shines a mag light in your eyes, you can't see. Right? So we right. know that light does different things to us. Is mm -hmm. there an element of natural light that's the, like, kind of like the difference between a fish being in an artificial aquarium and being in a, the ocean in a beautiful, pristine setting? Is there something about the natural light that we, the infrared spectrum, or is there some sort of heat in it, or is there something in it that's other than what we can see? I, I'm absolutely there is, and we know we know there is, right? Um, you you walk outside, you can feel it. No matter how great your lighting is inside, you walk outside, there is a difference, right? And mm -hmm. then the whole point is trying to get as close as we can to mimicking that, because um, we know we have a better feeling when we go outside. Everybody likes to be outside, you, you know, go hiking, camping, whatever it may be. There's something about being outside. That is a lot more exciting than sitting at my desk. So how do we try to replicate as much of that environment as we can? There's a reason that's the same. You're, you're tapping in the same reason why people with plants in their house are happier, right? Why, mm -hmm. why does having a plant in my house make me happier? Well, is it the oxygen that it gives off because it's cleaning the air? Or is it just the fact that there's a, something from outside inside this artificial space? You know, the same question. The fact what that is we, it? We don't, the fact that we don't know this, if you actually mm -hmm. acknowledge it, is super humbling. Yeah, I think there are a lot of questions in how we respond to our, you know, environment universe that we don't understand, which is why this is so exciting. We're on the cusp of trying to figure it out. This is the key to the universe, actually. I think if we actually figured out how light worked and how it created life, right, 
and and if you know how that you know the distance from the sun and all this sort of stuff would be like really would be keys to the 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 uh, the Eve's apple, like really becoming like mm-hmm. unto God if we could figure it out. Because mm-hmm. there's something we're creatures of the light. We all know it. You walk outside, you feel something. Now, why is it? And this is the next question, and maybe you won't be able to answer it, but. Why is it that we're not allowed to experiment on humans unless it's with light? I don't know that I can answer that question. Um, but I will ask you, I will ask you this because I want, I want to play off something you said, and I think it's okay. really interesting. It's a question I've always had just as a nerdy science engineer. Why is it that we can't travel faster than light? Why, what, what is it? I understand the mathematics behind it. Mass goes to infinity and you know it's the fundamental constant of the universe. Why is it that we can't travel faster than light? To your point, there is something different about light that unlike anything that we experience, um, and we know it has some dr- drastic impacts on our lives. Um, we can't live without it. Um, we know that if we put somebody in darkness, you know that that's not healthy for you. Um, we have to have light. So what is it? And that's the exciting part of this and what we're trying to figure out and be on the cusp of. Yeah, I think there's but actually yeah. light inside you. Okay, this is, I, I, I okay. think, yeah. okay, so like if, I, I, and this is, we're going spiritual, Greg, Greg's getting disappointed now, he's like, oh, yeah. light bolts yeah. out. But, so yeah. like, if you close your eyes and you meditate, I don't know if you've ever meditated very deeply, okay? Absolutely. Okay, or you, you hear people that report being on ayahuasca, for example, or psilocybin, or some of these psychedelic drugs, mm-hmm. they report seeing light with their eyes closed. They report mm-hmm. it as visions of some kind of light, Right. And, you know, you read Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. There's like kaleidoscopes. Like there, there's something going on that's inside of it. So if you go into a deep meditation or you, you practice kundalini yoga and you close your eyes and your eyes are closed for a long time, you start to see light inside. You, your eyes can see light. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a different set of, there's a different light there. The other thing that if we look at, at really what sustains us. Okay. So you have oxygen, water, and light. Those are this, the things that you need. You, you subtract any of those three things, you're going to die right away. All life mm-hmm. dies, right? No oxygen, no water, no light. What's different about those compounds? So, for example, I'm not a scientist. You're a dorky scientist. Why does water expand <laughs> when it freezes, mm-hmm. right? Like little things, there's little things different about these, these different elements. Mm-hmm. We understand water. We understand oxygen. We don't understand light. And... We're not even close to understanding it. And I've interviewed some of the top scientists on this podcast, and they can't even really tell me what it is. It's a wave. Exactly. It's a wave. It's this. We can see only a little particle part of it. Particle array. Yeah. Yep. It's gravity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you talk about, I mean, something that'll blow my mind. Now we're getting way off track here, but something that blows my mind is optical fans, right? You can pulse a light um, at a mirrored fan and it'll start rotating, right? You can move things with light. It's amazing. And and that's why I love being in the lighting space because every day is challenging. There's something new every day that I just don't understand. Yeah, it really is. It really is a wonderful business to be in. And, you know, I, I, uh, I grew up with light bulbs in the basement of my house when I was a kid. My dad ran the company out of our house. And I had light bulbs all in my house. So I was always in the lighting business, even mm-hmm. as a kid. But, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things that this, that I don't think the wider scientific community understands that, well, maybe we're really far away, but this industry feels like it's close to something huge. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. has a feeling about it, right? Yeah. There's like this. Yeah, absolutely. There's kind of like a vibe that, it's like, you know, man, if, oh man, like guys like on the front ends, like Greg and I, man, if I could just walk in and tell these peeps what to do with these light fixtures, I'm going to get real rich real quick. <laughs> I'm going to start selling $2,000, $3,000, two by four troffers. You know, you know how high his revenue just went up? Mm-hmm. It's been quite a bit. Yeah. We'll take it. Even, even bigger than that, if we can af- affect how people live their lives every day, that's the exciting part to me. The exciting part to me is partially that and partially making a ton of cash. <laughs> so I can spend a lot more time. Each his own. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, whew, Greg, you got, you got anything for us here? Yeah, well, I, I, I keep going back to that recommended profile because that's something I can actually wrap my head around and I can say, all right. But so when you say follow the sun, does it depend on the location you're at? You said yes, it does. So if you, if you don't have a yeah. sunny day, you're not you're going to make it not a sunny day in your office. Is that right? 
So it, so so currently our application is not going and pulling the weather and uh, updating for the weather. It basically you pick a time zone and it knows based off the time zone that you choose when the sunrise okay. and sunsets. It and it compensates for daylight savings time, so it knows that your sunset rise and sunset compensate for that. Um, you look, you know, down the road. Absolutely, that's where we're headed. There's no reason to say we can't go and pull from a server and get the weather and say, hey, it's a cloudy day. Let's take my panel that reflects this blue light to make it look like the sun. We're going to gray it out, make it feel like a, a cloudy day, right? Because it's storm's coming. Um, there's no, nothing to stop us from doing that. So it's always a sunny day with Katie and then. That's, that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you in marketing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's Woo. good. Oh, Corey, man, this has been one of the funnest podcasts we've done so far, man. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to thank time. you. I want to I want to address one more thing um, before we this fish out of fish figuring out there in water kind of situation. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that you know you can follow the sun and then mimic the sun at night for the the off shift workers. Mm-hmm. Do we got to be careful that we don't hurt them? That. It's an interesting question, right? Because, you know, we know that there's a rhythm to life, a rhythm, a circadian rhythm, you know, that's a, a common buzzword you hear around the lighting industry, right? And so to your point, do we start affecting people's internal clocks, right? If you think it's day, think it's night, what what time of day is it? I don't know. I can't tell, right? So there's absolutely, absolutely a question. And that's something something to be, be thinking about. Um, and so when each, that's where at this point, we're giving people choices, right? Um, and so each you know, company each, you know, group that installs these is going to have to make a decision on what's best for their group. Um, I will tell you, and this is just speaking from my own personal experience, I don't have a bunch of research behind this, you know, spending, like I said, spending 15 days in the NICU just recently with my daughter, I could have used a little sunlight in the middle of the night. That's for sure. Hmm. Um, when you're up, all, when you're up all night long, just sitting there and it's just not, you know, the nurses are just warriors. They're incredible. Um, anything I could do to help them or help the people that are in there, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, and so, fortunately, unfortunately, they didn't have any Cadians in there because we hadn't launched it yet. Or we're just getting ready to launch it. So, um, but now that it's launched, I mean, I'd love to see that in um, as many places as possible that could just help people out. Corey, thank you for being a guest on the Get a Grip on Lenny podcast. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I really had a good time talking to you. Thanks, Corey. KurtZone.com, partnering with BIOS, Greg. Go to K-U-R-T-Z-O-N.com. They're partnering for a brighter future, it says Woo. here. They have uh, the BIOS Sky Blue lighting solution is a natural sky blue light wavelength, and that helps regulate circadian rhythm. And so now KurtZone has that capability in all of their spec grade fixtures, their clean room containment, their vivarium fixture, their anti-ligature Come on, all these big fancy words I can't pronounce real well. Uh, all their medical fixtures, they have it. They have BIOS, they have circadian friendly lighting, and they make it spec grade. Check them out. Hmm. Cool. Is Johnny Appleseed from Minnesota? <laughs> I think he's, uh, no, like Tennessee, Kentucky, you know, somewhere out there. I didn't think. He, didn't he go to Minnesota? Did Johnny Appleseed go to Minnesota? Yeah, isn't that like, is that Johnny Appleseed country? Different. Is Minnesota? Uh, Maybe we're gonna have to look that one up. What does Johnny Appleseed got going on? I'm just wondering if he knows Pennsylvania, how to Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, West Virginia, and Ontario. Hashtag CanCon. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, kind of so, in that middle section there. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So did they have Little House in the Prairie? That's Minnesota, though, right? That is Minnesota, Minnesota, South Dakota. Sure, yeah. Okay. Why? What does all this have did, to do did, with? D- didn't they learn to read? <laughs> can, can, can Laura Ingalls say anti ligature? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, she probably could. I, come you know, on. Come on. Don't, for me. Ah, you Midwesterners. So humble. So humble. So I'm working humble. at it. Hey, we'd like to thank Kurt Sign. Go to K-U-R-T-Z-O-N.com. Another Midwestern company straight out of Chicago, of course. 100 years old or more, man. So go there. National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors. Go to NALD.org, baby. Check us out. Come on down to Biloxi, Mississippi. Biloxi. 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 Yeah, that's Biloxi. right. We're at the Pearl, the Scarlet Pearl, not the Black Pearl, the Scarlet Pearl. That's right. We're just going to call it the Straight Pearl. Come on down. <laughs> We're going to have fun. There's going to be lots of learning going on. There's going to be a pool party hosted by Greg and I, the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast, hosting a pool party. That's right. That'll be fun. We're going to live stream from everywhere. You know how we roll. And of course, Corey Litz. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. 
Thank you for coming on the show. That was a fun one, Greg. That was an interesting topic with uh, Cree and like where they're headed. We'll see where it goes from here. Everyone's reaching for it. That's right. Thanks for listening. Written on the rectory wall, there's a sign there for all. You are lost, Lord is there to find you.